Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean. I'm out here on a beautiful day in uh, Port Orange, Florida. It's around 70, 75 degrees with nice eastern and western uh, wind swirling coming in here and there. You can smell the ocean, it's nice. I hurt my back a couple days ago, well, last week, and I posted a video just recently, um, my last video, showing you that I was serving and I was just playing like complete trash. But although when you're practicing, and you're not hitting all your shots and you're not playing to your height, you know, to, to your potential, you still don't want to put yourself down. Um, I, what I mean by is playing like trash because of the wind and stuff in this, the other net being high. I'm not making excuses. It sounds like it, but I'm not. But subconsciously, your mind is always used to throwing a ball a certain way and hitting the ball the same exact way you have developed memory uh, muscles, you know? And I, started playing tennis when I was about 16 and then um, I was playing at the Ocean Drive the club and helping teach there in the 90s and then I had that injury in my hip and I had to have both my hips replaced and I got a plate in my shoulder and then recent times I was diagnosed with diabetes too so there's a few things I've been fighting with and I came back to play tennis about three months ago because some of my friends on my other channel they're just going through tough times and I just want to let them know that hey I'm not a rich person. I have the same troubles you have, and I am disabled. But you still have to kind of get out of house. You have to get out of the house. You have to get fresh air, and you have to have a hobby. And this is more than a hobby. I actually love tennis. It's one of my favorite sports. I got really good at it. I won a few tournaments, and I just like playing against different people. And the way that I, from all the things I read about tennis and how I, how I, I look at tennis. I look at tennis as each one of us are artists and the tennis court is the canvas and everybody has a different style of art, which is the way they hit the ball, the way they serve. And that's what makes tennis, tennis so unique. It's like surfing. When I surfed growing up, everybody had a different surfing uh, style. Uh, just like in tennis, people try to emulate Tom Curran and Kelly Slater and Mark Acalupo and all the great surfers at the time that were aggressive. So I grew up in an era where Crickstein was playing, Andre Agassi was playing, Jim Curry was playing. They had an aggressive style and you played from the baseline and you basically just took your racket back and rip it and grip it. So my first rackets that I started playing with were these Wilson Profile 95s. The thickest, stiffest racket probably ever made. It's so stiff. Now a good player, like a pro player, would have a, anybody really, unless you're playing doubles, it's a tough racket to get used to because you have to have a flat stroke in most of my, like I grew up, not with a continental grip, but like a real severe Eastern grip. So now as an adult, 51, I'll be 52 in a couple weeks. Uh, I changed my grip a little bit. I was watching a tour of tennis and I watched this other dude, HQ Tennis uh, Cells, Q, 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 Crew Cells. And there's a, 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 another channel, Winston Wu, and they're doing great work over there, by the way. There was an awesome match. Uh, Clay Thomas was playing against, I can't remember the dude's name. He's a terrific player, two awesome players. And then what I was showing you is that now I got this racket. This, um, because of the, well, what I'm telling you about the guys that are playing on that, on that channel, their rackets are so tuned and they're so used to their rackets. They have them balanced, the strings are a certain way. And I'm telling you, if that racket's not strung a certain way or it's not balanced the way that they, those professionals play, they're gonna spray balls all over the court because they're just not gonna be used to that racket. And then the same thing with anybody else. I'm getting used to a racket that's bigger, it's thinner, and it's much lighter. This racket was like 274 grams, almost 13 ounces. This racket is 264 grams and about nine ounces. And the stringing pattern is 1620 and it has a hundred square inch frame this is 95 so I have more room for error so like when I bought my racket back and this is a heavy one and you'll see the difference let me show you this is a, this balance is in the handle it's very hand handle heavy so it's a, it's a it's good for people that hit flat or play doubles or you just got you know doubles basically I, I would suggest if you're gonna play with a stiff bracket you play doubles this racket here is balanced in the head, which I like. If I could have it my way, it, I would just have a perfectly balanced racket where it was just balanced perfectly and I can just adjust 
to how I want to hit the ball. But I'm not a professional, nor have I ever been a professional. But I grew up around a lot of good players, and I played against a lot of good players. I, uh, when I was 17, I played some chick from California, and she was ranked third uh, in her. She was the third seed in, on her team, and we were playing on clay. And then you know, I got to, uh, you know, learn how pro proper tennis is played, and I. I held my own. I actually beat her the first set, 6-2. Then she beat me 6-3 in the second set, and then I lost the third set, 6-3. But my, I was destroying her serve, like her second serve, just as a guy. I was just hitting it, and it was on clay. And I was young and fast. I could run down balls. It was really fun. And uh, I asked her, I said, did you hold back on me? And she smiled, and she said, no, I played pretty good. And I'm like, no, I think you held back on me, you know, because I, I think some shots, she could have really laid into them. But I played all different types of players. I met all kinds of people, famous people, from being around tennis, and it's really cool. We used to go to the Lipton in um, Key Biscayne, Florida, and I met Aaron Krikstein, uh, Andre Agassi, I met Jim, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jim Kerr, uh, Jimmy Connors, uh, Patrick McEnroe, they, uh, and his brother John. They would come out before their matches and just hit on one of the courts that were open, and people would get around, and then by the time, like me and my, we were in high school, so me and my friend Beatbox, his name is Beatbox, we call him Beatbox, but his real name is Brett. Beatbox and I were looking around to see what was going on because all the matches were kind of over and it was like almost becoming nighttime and the lights started coming on. And they had a match with uh, Andre Agassi, was playing uh, a dude from Georgia, forget his name, he was a good player, he beat Agassi. Agassi was trying to use thicker rackets at the time, wide body, wider bodies like that. And he was shanking balls everywhere. It was so bad he broke his racket. He was just so mad he broke his racket. And then, you know, we're little kids, 17, 18 year old kids, we're like, come on, Andre, come on, pull it together, you know? And he's just looking, he's like, not today, folks, you know? So I just wanted to show you the difference between these modern rackets, which is making everybody play better with modern strings. That's why the ball's flying much faster people are striking the ball harder and that's why you don't see serving and volume anymore because they're just going to get destroyed uh even unless you're even Sampras right now if in his prime would have a time trying to serve and volley he'd have to adjust his game because people like the equipment's just too good um and you know in my opinion uh Novak is probably the second best return server ever in the history of the game of, of tennis him and Jimmy Connors and, and, and Andre Agassi were amazing and, and I say Andre Agassi is the best because he had to go up against the greatest servers at the time, Boris Becker, Gordon Ivanovich, uh, uh, Mark Lupalopos, however you say his name. Um, there were guys hitting balls 120, 130 mile an hour servers with fucking shit rackets like that. Well, this isn't a shit racket. I gotta tell you, I love this racket. It's my favorite racket. And I just, I had it strung about three months ago with profile strings and uh, their top spin. So the mains were strung at 40. Uh, I think I had the main strung at 48 and then my crosses at 44. As I say, you don't need a lot of power with this. You just bring it back and the racket does most of the power. This is on the other hand, I like this because I can swing it like I want to and hit the ball collect correctly. But you know, if you're disabled, I just want to let you know, there's things that you can do to get yourself uh, you know, feeling better. Even if you just come out to the tennis courts, get a tennis ball and just bounce it and walk around and it help your eye and hand coordination. And then I have a few, I have a real problem at night. I have severe cramps in my legs. I've had them for about 10 years now. And uh, I've been finding to do stretching like this before I go to bed and after matches. Just doing stretching, it helps a little bit, and actually pickle juice and, uh, and flaxseed that helps with the cramps. So I get injured a lot because I'm older and I'm trying to do things that I used to do when I was younger. So it's, it's just a gradual thing that happens to everybody. I'm telling you from my own experience, just take it easy, come out and do your best, practice serves, and uh, you know hit practice like I was showing you. You can drop the ball and just practice hitting the cone. Practice sitting in the middle of the court, you know. You gotta see the spin on it, see the difference between. Now before, this is how I used to hit the ball. I'd bring the ball back and just hit it like that. It would be flat. But now I'm even doing it with more top spin, but it would be a flat stroke and it would barely go across the net. But the new way of hitting with uh, Nick was telling and the other fellas 
you get a little more top spin. And I always bought my racket with my hand back. It was just something, I guess, from surfing and skateboarding. I kind of balanced myself and then hit through it like that. But everybody has their own style. That's why I say it's like art. And it's what everybody, I like watching tennis at every level. So um, I'm gonna hit a few serves over there. And then those cones that are set up, I'm going to try to hit them by forehand and backhand and we're gonna do that. So let's have some fun and uh, take it easy. But uh, you know, I've been jogging a little bit, trying to get my weight down. So before I go, I'll just do a little jog over there. anybody to hit with if you don't have anybody to to return your serve I play this game where I pretend I'm playing against somebody and I visualize that there's somebody over there and I only get one serve so I gotta put it in the box or that person wins that point so I do about let's say almost a set like that four games or five about four or five games like that and then I'm playing against myself but I'm also preparing myself to be in a situation where you're down and you have to come back now the great Doug Collins that coached the 76ers and the Chicago Bulls and did this to Michael Jordan every time Jordan's team in practice was winning Doug Collins would take him from that winning team and put him on the losing team. So every time he's always been practicing, he's always uh, kind of come back. So that's a mental thing that you can do, and pros can do that. Anybody can do this. And I know got a lot of guys get technical about the technical scientific parts of hitting the ball and stuff, but it's all mental. As, uh, as the great Yogi Berra said, uh, baseball is 95% mental and the other 100% just showing up. So uh, he was a funny guy. So yeah, that's a game you could play. And then you can see my serves are getting closer because I was standing here. Like when I 
was younger, I could surf like that. I'd, I'd stand, I'd go like this, and my leg would be like that far apart, like almost a racket back here. And I'd throw the ball up and then hit it like that. Well, at 51, folks, and 190 pounds, I should be at like 160, 170. I already lost 35 pounds, my friends, listening to my man over there at Tudor of Tennis and, uh, and my buddy. I don't know them personally, but I watch them so much I feel like I know them. And my man over there from HQ in uh, Winston Wu watching them play tennis. It motivates me to get out here and do this. So I do appreciate that. I don't make channels for money. I have another channel. I've been on YouTube since 2012 with my original channel. Still on there, Sean Sweeney. And then my other channel. I've been on there for like seven, eight years. And this is uh, one of my older channels. So I do this stuff because I enjoy doing it. I want no money from anybody. And the only time I've ever asked for money on my channel was Ryan, the Jets fan, passed away about seven years ago, five or seven, it's around there. Uh, he, his family needed money to help him get buried and he was a subscriber of mine didn't know him personally don't know him my other friend the car dreamer got together and they got money and they raised money and that's and that's the only time i've ever asked anybody for any money for anything and i never will this is for free and uh i hope this guy ain't dumb enough to go in my car when he's standing here there's some people out there folks Anyway, that's a game you can play. You start off, or you're down, well, you know, you're down right off the bat. Like, well, you're, right now you're not. You're just starting off. But you throw the ball up. That hit the line. So I got that one. Luckily, barely hit the line. <laughs> it might have been long. Let's just say it was long. So I'm down low 15. I got one more serve. You know, I got to serve it out. Low 15, right off the bat. That was long for sure. So now I'm down low 30. All right. So, and then how that works out is when you got the cones on this side, obviously you see the cones. If you hit the cone, it's an automatic ace. So I'm at 30, 15. My man over there, he's killing it. Right on the line, wow. So, big serve, we're back in it, 30 off. Missed that one. Tried it on both sides. That's a hard one to get, that short serve. It's fun as hell though. Look, fellas, fellas and ladies. I hit this ball so many times, it's literally falling apart. I used to play tennis with my friend Darren Farmer. I love that guy, he was my best friend in high school. He's the one that really got me playing tennis. That guy played tennis, he hit a tennis ball so hard, he would literally break the ball in half on his serve. I had to play against him one time. It was, oh my God, it was brutal. I, uh, thank goodness I had a good return of serve. I didn't get like bageled. I lost two and two, but everybody was watching us. It was weird. There was about 500 people watching this match at, this, uh, at the Indigo Manor where the LPGA is at. And I was in high school and he was a number one seed. And of course my first tournament, I get this fella. And uh, we were playing doubles together. So we won the doubles and he won the singles. And I got put out in the first round of singles against him. But I was literally using a Kmart tennis racket because my other rackets, my, string, my strings broke on them, just trying to get a ball on a serve. So yeah, so 30, we're 30 off. And then we go, even uh make it to where it's 1540. Put some pressure on yourself. Right down there. So now we're at 3040. You only get one serve. So we're at 3040. Coming back, coming back, hopefully. Ah, woo, that was close, folks. We've got a couple more balls over here. It's just a, it's a fun way to do things, and uh, it's just a little game you can play, and, and you just have fun with it, you know? I don't see any other channels with people just being themselves, except the few people that I mentioned. They're not who they are, you know, they're being pre pretend people, 
and, and, and I am who I am and I appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and all giving me information on how to improve my game and if you get something out of this, this is awesome, thank you. Okay, the last. Two of them in a row, folks. Okay, we came back. Let's leave it at that for a minute. So, it's a little fun game you can play. And I like this racket. I need some strings in it, though, for sure, I can tell. I mean, some balls fly off of this, folks. You're going to see when I hit some balls over here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, I'll get the basket. And, uh... Baskets are awesome. I actually got this at a garage sale one time. And uh, kind of ever since. But you have to replace the balls on there. Because you can't really hit flat balls too much. It's not good for your arm. And it's definitely not good for your uh, for what you're trying to do. And your timing. Everything's timing is going to close. Get your eye wing coordination and timing. Play basketball too. It'll help you. Anything that helps. Remember, in one of my videos, I was telling you how we beat this team that was better than us by just lobbing. And that's something I practice too. Right deep. Deep and it's got a funny bounce on it. So I hit them much higher and deeper than that sometimes. But just getting it getting used to hitting that, you'll win a lot more points than you think. Because a lot of people can't hit overheads for some reason. Even the best players in the world have problems with it, which I don't understand, because it's just like a serve. But I've seen Novak miss a few bad ones before. And I was like, dude, have you been watching my videos? I was tweeting them on Twitter, kidding around with him. I was like, please don't, don't, don't play like me. <laughs> he's, he's laughing, I guess. But you gotta have a sense of humor. And I just did. <laughs> so Walmart sell these tennis balls they're practice tennis balls and dude you trash them now I'm not even I mean I got a pretty decent forehand my backhand's all right too but I mean I can wind up and hit a tennis ball but if you're a pro or a solid four or five five oh player look at that that's look at, look that's only a few times that's like a set and I so I won't even play it this day. It's getting ready to go bye-bye. It, it'll bounce, barely. You don't want that. Sally, Jesse, Ralph, yell, you really got a hold of that one. Yeah, I got a hold of that one. So I dropped the ball and started to hit cross court. And you see right in between the coins, I mean the cones, I'm gonna try to hit the big cone. I just pulled it wide and that's that old style uh, grip that I have uh, that I changed a little bit. Now I got sort of a eastern, semi western, but it's mostly eastern. I mean, I had a club of an eastern grip. My friend that's a pro is laughing. He's like, Sean, man, you got, he's like, he's like, you got one of the most extreme eastern grips I've seen. I was like, well, you know, I was playing with that profile, Corey. And uh, it's a stiff racket. I also used to like the graphite, the Prince graphite that Michael Sand played with. 
That was a cool ass racket. I don't know whatever happened to Prince, not the singer, the people that make rackets. So I'll drop the ball and I'll go try to hit down the line, get the cone, almost. Let's try it again. Drop it. Flat. You see how flat I hit? And uh, that's good and bad. It's I don't really like hitting that flat shot too much anymore. Uh, as far as you know, I want to play consistently. So I get the ball. Ball's coming. The bracket a little bit through my body, and I get practice hitting down the middle. Now that was low. That was a bad shot. So you come underneath the ball. You bring it, bring through the ball. And then if you watch these videos, like I'm saying, these fellas are telling you that I watch. See, this is just your arm. That's your arm. When you drop the ball and step into it, you get almost got it. Get in the middle of it, and you can hit, hit through it. Even though I hit the tape, I'm still getting my power into it. It's the same thing with your backhand. Another thing, like I said, I'm gonna I want to try those Cinco strings. They'll be cool. They're cool. Almost. Yeah. And of course, people love doing them drop shots, but you can also slice it. That's more of a slice drop shot, but. Practice that with a conventional. Practice doing drop shots. I do them like that, doubles up high with a when I do a lob sometimes. Look at this fella. Oh. And there's dips all in here, man. When I win the lottery, I'm gonna replace the course for these people. Here's another butte. That's uh that's gonna be gone also. That's fun. And it costs no money. So, if you get fun in doing that, I use a lot of swing. That's my lob. And I just hold it just like that at waist level in my back leg. And I hit pretty good with it. When I get a ball machine, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's hard to drop feet to yourself and put the ball. Well, that's another reason why I do this too, because everything's different. You hold them different grips. You drop feet to yourself. That thing you want to be able to hit outwards. You don't want to drop feet here, where you're dropping the ball right there on your racket. You want to be able to get into it. You just see how close that is? Well, the distances between what I'm hitting with my back foot, that, and bringing the racket back, actually more like this, so I kind of do, and I just got to consider, right now you can't tell, but I have a very consistent backhand, especially on return serve, but just practicing, trying to do, I try to hit the singles because I play doubles a lot, and it really helps, but of course, like I'm playing with elderly people, in their 70s and 80s i'm not ripping no balls like that i'm just having fun hitting the ball back to them but when i get a chance to get an open side of the court because they are good doubles i'll just try to hit a passing shot or hit one down the middle but i'll try to hit a passing shot like that to where it's over there on the side and as i said these lobs when the ball comes you can hit beautiful lobs and a lot of them hit way on the tape you can get the ball around 12, 15 feet in the air, seriously. It's gonna be tough for anybody to do that, to get to get that ball back with any kind of offensive ability. And, unless you're short like me, because I can literally hit, I'm only 5'7", so some of these balls that bounce up, I literally hit overheads on them, like that. But 
Second serve is a very important thing to get too. You see it a lot of my first serves, but and different variations of second serves. But I just keep my feet closer now. And then as that fellow was saying, you kind of throw the ball. That was a little extreme, but throw the ball in front of you and hit it between six o'clock and uh, you'll brush the ball and it'll give a kick. And if you go more towards seven, you'll even have more slice on it. It's just practice. As I say, at our level, the more tennis balls you can hit, the better off you're gonna be to be able to get it consistently better. And the ball comes back, and I hit it right into the net and lost the point. And I didn't change my grip. <laughs> well, either way, that happens. So, you break your practice, you serve the ball, pretend the ball comes back, and then you put some pin on it, put a top pin, put it in play. This thing holds close to about 75 tennis balls. So if you hit the keep the buckets of it, you're gonna have 210, uh, I'm sorry, 150 tennis balls. That's your hit. Now, I've been messing around my back pin because those last two were uh, Easter grit. And then now, that was, had to change it. And just moving my hand a little bit like that made my rhythm off to where I double hit the ball. So, uh, like I say, I just I try to get the ball away from my body when I'm doing this. Just showing you when you're hitting your backhand, this arm wants to be stiff and this arm wants to be loose. And you bring it to where you're right here where your hips are at and you put all your weight. You'll automatically, you can't even bring your racket back like that, you know, automatically will hit with top spin, or you'll drive it, depending on how hard you swing through it, and then I'll practice backhand slice, you know, it's hard with these tennis balls, it's alright though, backhand slice, backhand drop shot, I like to do a variety of things, but I don't go and hit drop shots and nil important points. If they're way back there off the baseline, and I'm standing here and they're five feet from the baseline, and the ball bounces, yeah, I'll try one. I'll try one. And then if you don't hit it right, because you gotta hit, it, gotta hit it high, that ball can set up perfectly for your opponent. So it's a trick, it's a tough shot to, to do continuously. I'm tired. I'm just, I'm just shocked. Some of the shit that I've learned off this internet, sorry about my language. I'm like, I thought I did this 10 years, 15 years ago when I was playing, or 25 years ago at this point. It would have been a lot easier to, to watch YouTube to learn how to play better. And the ball comes back. I hit it. I don't really start the ball start to rally off by pounding the ball I go if I see an open shot I'll take it if you see how I hit it's very low and fairly clear from that so when I do hit with a lot of top spin it, it's got a lot of bounce on it with that one then I got the flash shot like I say that one covered clears a little bit too. Try to get that cone down the line. Oh, I just missed it. Just missed it. Missed a double too. Ah! I go down the other line. No pull on that one. Now, as I say, That's bad. That's why you don't want the ball to be near your body. 
Sometimes I'll do silly shit like that and try to whip it cross court. I think it's just fun. You know, if I was going like this, take it off the frame. Fun, fun, fun. But you're moving around. You're getting exercise. And it helps your mind and your body heal. And uh, like I said, you get, you get some serves. Like I was showing you. back, deep, hit back to his backhand or forehand, whatever, another ball comes, hit it that way, another one comes, inside out, that was bad, you have to get used to that shot, you can drive it, oh, almost, yeah, I can drive the ball and hit it pretty clean that way. But when I try that, that one, I got it. <laughs> okay, maybe I will try the way this goes until. Nice. Thank you for the advice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, once you step into it, that's where your power's coming from. Where it's coming from. All visual. That's cool. <laughs> I was just telling him, well, I don't know if I can hit that forehand with that grip. And I took the tone. That was a good one. Okay. That's some little drills, some little games you can play. Man, I gotta stop smoking cigarettes, folks. I promise, I'm doing better. I got this thing here, the kids, uh, my wife got me. It's a little puffer machine that helps me stop smoking cigarettes. I started smoking cigarettes in 20, no, I was 29 when I was going to college, and I had to stay up late, late one night and write a paper about Durkheim, and uh, Amelia Durkheim. And I uh, was tired. It was like 11 o'clock at night, had a nine o'clock exam and uh, coffee. And my friend that was really smart, Jason, he was like, dude, if you smoke a cigarette, it'll help you stay, stay asleep or get awake or whatever. So I did. And then, what is it? I'm 52 this year. So I've been smoking for 20 years, 21 years, which I'm going to stop. And then I stopped for a couple years too, in between there, but. I can tell you, I can feel the difference. I'm sweating all this poison out of me, folks. Before I started playing tennis again, I was on all kinds of medicine, and it just was bad for me. And, and I'm not saying that anybody did bad business intentionally, but I gained weight, I was depressed, I was just going through some stuff. And then one day, because I, so, I was so sad, from not being able to play tennis, that I couldn't even watch tennis on TV anymore or even read about it or anything. Then one day about four months ago, I was watching Novak and, uh, and Adele, one of their matches. And then I'm like, I started looking into other matches and Agassi was playing Connors and all that. And like, I just brought back good memories and I was like, to hell with it, man. I'm gonna get my rackets and I'm gonna go out there and make a video, a channel for us to all learn and grow and get better together 
and uh, share, share, share experiences from the game of tennis, which I love. And uh, I've met so many nice people playing tennis. The people I play tennis in the morning with are the nicest people. And as I say, they're a little older, they're older than me, so I'm not out there ripping balls. I actually hit the ball back to them gently, or with a decent pace or what have you, and we all play for fun. And we're out there rallying. And uh, of course, some of these serves that are coming over, uh, I mean, some of them literally serve underhanded. Uh, you could tee off on them, you know. Uh, but if you miss your shot, there's someone standing at the net, you could hurt them, you know. And I'm not willing to do that. You saw the on my other video, on some of my serves before when I was trying to move my feet, how wild it was. I mean, the ball didn't even bounce out wide. Now you imagine someone standing there that's not able to put their racket up or defend themselves to get hit by a ball that's going 100 miles an hour right in their face or chest because you're trying to be a macho person, you know, against. And I've learned that too. It doesn't matter how hard you hit the tennis ball, that ball has to be in, in there, you know. And that's like I said, I saw a good match between Clay Thompson and, and I forget the fellow's name, but my suggestion to Wu uh, uh, Winston uh, would be to get lines people to call the lines uh, in those matches. Those fellows hit the ball too hard and they're, t they're involved in the game so much, it's unfair really to have them call their own lines because the ball's moving too fast, you know. And, and the, some of these dudes hit the ball so hard and on the line they may look like it's wide, but if the line judges stand there, they're going to know for sure, you know, and that would be a fair thing to do. And I'm sure any of your friends or yourself could call the lines. You're fair. And I'm not saying that they're not fair. The players that we're playing, they're nice, they're gentlemen, and they're good people. And they, you know, I'm a Notre Dame guy, but I don't have nothing against the Bruins. Um, you do have, you have Joe Walton. And uh, my team, Notre Dame, beat you guys in 78 when you had that two and a half year uh, stretch where nobody beat you. Um, my team beat you, but still love you guys. I'm just saying, it'd be a lot more interesting because um, I think they would actually play better, in my opinion, because that's a lot of pressure. You know, Clay's uh, serve, that guy's got to serve, he's got to be in at least a high 120, around 120 miles an hour or so uh, when he cracks it. And that other fellow is not no slouch either. So, I mean, and they're going out wide and, you know, and I know they know when they hit a ball that's in or out, but sometimes you think the ball might be out and it, it, hits, it hits the back of the line. So that's just my suggestion. And if you guys want to go watch some really good tennis, like I say, Winston Wu, um, got people, they, they play all the time, all different levels. And uh, I don't make no money off of any of this stuff. If I didn't think they were decent people, I would not even tell anybody to go there. I watch these people for a long time, and I'm good at judging people from being a true channel on my other channel. I'm really good at judging people, and there's a lot of grifters on YouTube, lots of grifters, and they're trying to get your money, and that's the, the name of the game. That's why I'll never monetize my channels or ask you for any money or anything like that, because it dilutes the... the, the the, the thing that I'm trying to do and that's to help and share and make friends with people so I appreciate everybody watching Ashley has the day off and she uh, and her friend went out last uh, yesterday and they had Krispy Kreme donuts and you know it was her birthday and they spent the time together and then I went with her last night to help her pick her friend a pocketbook out I guess I went to Bell's that was a lot of fun I was literally sitting in a chair watching basketball and <laughs> on my phone and stuff and she's like how's that look I was like yeah then I was like okay I gotta get involved in this so we helped I helped her pick she already had the pocketbook it's a leather one it looked like a you know an American Indian type style uh, pocketbook so she got two of them one for her friend and one for her and uh, they had a good time and uh, I wasn't feeling too good I was really tired so I went to sleep and I don't drink alcohol or nothing so Sometimes, like I say, people just have to do the thing and they like to do things like make donuts and or go get donuts or sometimes they like bacon and they don't get to see each other that often and their schoolmates like Chad and I, Chad, you met Chad on my other channel, he's my schoolmate and uh, known him since I've been 14 and he lives with me. He was living in Ohio 
and it was bad up there. They were forcing people to do things against their will to have a job. And I said, dude, no, 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 they're not doing that down here in Florida. Come on down here, man. And I said, if I have to drive my car and get you, I'll do it. And he's like, no, dude, I got a car. So he drove down and uh, we got a pretty good support system, you know? We're all different in our own way, just like tennis is like, a, like I say, it's an art. And you're the painter or the artist, so no matter how you play, the ball has to go into the box. That's pretty much it. And you just come out here and just swing away like I'm doing. That's the whole thing, folks, before I leave. The more tennis balls that you hit, the more you get used to swinging the racket, the more you play, if you, you can find someone to hit with, or just come out here and get some tennis balls in a little thing here or just walking around the tennis court, bouncing the ball, anything, everything. Every time you get, or if you're at home, practice just doing your backhand. You're using your back foot. Because I had, like I said, I had both my hips replaced. I got big ass scars on my legs, but my legs are getting bigger and stronger from playing. So I am, I still get massive cramps, but it's all mental folks. You have to really be strong mentally. You can't let, let things get to you like that because what God says he says you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and that's a, that's a big statement you know he didn't say that you do some things he didn't say oh once in a while you can do this he said you can do all things so that's where we're at we're going to be able to do all things that we can do to help ourselves get better even taking walks you know walk the dog get yourself a pet I got plants, I got plants like grow, you know, like uh, ferns and, and, uh, and uh, roses and things like that. I do that kind of stuff, any kind of hobby. And obviously me coming out here hitting some tennis balls, it, it helps me out. It, Cause I don't feel right. I feel like I got a lot of energy. And then if I don't go out and hit a tennis balls, I'm like, oh, I didn't do something today. You know, I feel like I didn't do something today. It's become that part of my routine. So, and I haven't played tennis in a week. The last time I played was last Friday because of my back, because of my dumb ass trying to use these old style serves that I used to do when I was younger and bend into it and try to crack it. I just, now I just simply see how it's a little more, I think I'm a little more accurate. And you know, I had to put my profile, I had to put them, I had to retire the old girl. I, I miss playing with her, but she's re officially retired. She's just in the bags. And uh, I don't play with her anymore there. She's a, She's officially retired. I used to love these rackets, man. You could crack a ball so hard with these things. It was fun. Anyway, I wish everybody the best and uh, I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. And we will definitely be back soon. And I, like I say, I do appreciate everybody watching. I think you guys are great. And uh, Nathan, just hang in there, buddy. You're doing great, I'm proud of you. And my friend Stefan, you hang in there too, buddy. God loves you and so do I. Okay, I'll never forget that folks.